Hey guys, I'm back with the cell membrane and we're going to be talking about the structure and function of the cell membrane. But whenever we do, it has to bring us back to the fluid mosaic model. What you see a picture of it here is simply proteins that are embedded or floating within a, a phospholipid bilayer. Um, now when we think about the plasma membrane, we think about its selective permeability, which means it allows some things in while keeping other things out. Now this is directly due to the amphiopathic nature of the phospholipid. That means it has both hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts to it. Now the hydrophobic means that it has a water fearing part, think of phobia, and the hydrophilic means it has a water loving part. All right. Now when we talk about the fluid mosaic model we have to give credit to Singer and Nicholson which in 1972 were the first ones to say that this, the plasma membrane is just a mosaic of these various proteins that are embedded in a bilayer of phospholipid as shown here in this in this picture. All right, let's talk a little bit about the phospholipids first. You can see the phospholipid on the right. It has a, phospho, a phosphate head, which we know, which is hydrophilic, which means that it loves water. Now, its tail, on the other hand, is a fatty acid chain um, that is water-fearing or hydrophobic. Now, if you look at the diagram at the bottom, that means that when we throw that hydrophobic, I mean, excuse me, we try to throw that phospholipid into water, the, the water-loving head is going to go toward water on the outside and the inside of the cell, and the water-fearing tail is going to end up on the inside. So it ends up with a non-polar region on the inside and polar region on the outside. This is very important because this bilayer that's created will actually serve as a barrier for molecules. Like, for example... This lipid molecule, since it is nonpolar, can freely move back and forth across the membrane. However, the salt, the water, the sugar, and the waste molecules, which have to have a polar nature to them, are unable to move across this um, bipolar phospholipid layer without some help. So it gives it a boundary, you know, a cellular barrier, if you will, uh, between the inside and the outside of the cell. Now, the cell membrane actually defines the cell. It's what separates the living inside the cell from the outside of the cell, even though it is very, very thin, only about 8 nanometers thick. Uh, but it does effectively control what comes in and out, and it's because of this nonpolar versus polar part that I mentioned just a minute ago. Now, so how then do you get permeability to polar molecules if they're unable to move across the plasma membrane freely? Well, you do this by integ integrating protein channels. Protein channels will allow the sugar to move in and out, amino acids to move in and out, water, salt, ammonia, which is waste, to move in and out across the membrane. So they're actually going to move through these protein channels. So if sugar wanted to move in, or I mean, excuse me, outside it would move that way. If salt wanted to move in or, or waste wanted to move in, it would move this way. So, you know, this, these channels, these pores, are what allow them to move and it gives us that semi-permeable nature. Now, it's more than just a, just a lipid bilayer, so make sure you understand that. It actually has membrane proteins that are called transmembrane proteins. And a transmembrane protein simply means that it transverses from the outside to the inside of the cell. That's going to act as the ability to allow the cell to communicate with other cells. It's also going to allow for it to um, have particles move back and forth across their channels. Now, when you look at the proteins that uh, anchor molecules within it, you know, within the membrane, you have a nonpolar amino acid, which is hydrophobic, which means it's scared of water, anchored to a protein um, to hook it into the membrane. So this is going to give it the stability. On the outer surface of the membrane, you're going to have polar amino acid, which is hydrophilic, which extends maybe into the region. So these, these membrane proteins are going to be made up of both a nonpolar and a polar part. So it depends on where they are. And you can see here in red is the nonpolar regions of this protein. So, so here's the entire protein. Okay, here's the protein. You can see the nonpolar, the hydrophobic part here in red, and then the polar part is in purple at each end. Now, there are many, many functions that membrane proteins can serve. The first one is a transporter. It's going to allow things to move back and forth across the membrane. That makes sense to you. The next one, and it acts as a channel. The next one, it can act as an enzyme. 
So it's going to maybe something comes into it, hooks into it, and it's going to release it. It's called, remember, enzymes are proteins. Uh, it can be on the outside, the cell surface receptor. So it's going to co actually capture certain things and then release them inside the cell. It can act as a cell identifying marker. Now, we deal with this in the immune system when it acts as an antigen. You know, this is how we recognize something as being foreign or as being self. So we know how our body knows how to attack it or not. Um, it can actually be used to hook one cell to another. And in that case, it can act as communication, by the way. And then it can actually be used to attach the cytoskeleton to the plasma membrane and kind of hold the whole cell together. So there's many, many different functions of membrane proteins. And when we talk about membrane proteins, there's only two part, two types. And it depends on their location. All right. The first one is a peripheral protein. Peripheral proteins are proteins that are found on the outside of the membrane. They're extended from it. They're loosely attached, like the antigen. The other one is going to be an integral protein. And these are the transmembrane proteins that go completely through the membrane. These are going to be like your channels, which things can move back and forth on. All right. Now, there are also things called membrane carbohydrates, which are involved in cell-to-cell -cell recognition, like with your antigens. And this is very important, like in blood types. You're going to have a different carbohydrate for every blood group. So a different carbohydrate for A, for B, for AB would have both of them, and then for O would have none. So, you know, it's going to work in your basic immune system. Now, I hope this has cleared things up a little bit for you with cell membranes and how things, uh, how it communicates and how it works as a barrier. And I will talk to you soon.